And one of the things, at least from a man's POV, that has to happen first is we've been coached and shown how not to talk for so long. Mm -hmm. And we have all these secrets, which which are like, you know, barriers to get us to that open communication. And we have to get those secrets out of the way so that we can have that clear line of communication. And oftentimes we don't do that work. And even sometimes we hide in that work. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but we can hide in that work in therapy. I've met men that have talked to their therapists about things that they haven't even talked to their wives about. Welcome to the Godbolt Life Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Godbolt, with my beautiful wife, Jade Godbolt. We believe that marriage God's way is the most powerful catalyst towards healing and holiness for you and everybody after you. Wow. First off, this room is fire. Right? You it like feels, it? yeah. We've done like multiple different types of like sets at this point, not just with the podcast, but with other things too. And I feel like there is a level of, of just comfort when it's just us that you have specifically yeah. Yeah. than when there's even like two people in the room or like five people in the room, you know, trying to do everything. And I think that this setup is a combination of what we've done previously. So like the at home stuff, the do it ourselves stuff. This is like a nice evolution for us because I think that it really gets to the original premise of why we started doing this. We wanted to bring people in to our intimate conversations about our marriage, how we are learning about each other, how we're learning about God, about Christ through our marriage and what that really has been like for yeah. us. And so I think that us doing it in this space is fresh and new and yet also still like very us and very yeah. like our audience is going to be used to this kind of energy and space from us. Okay. So how do we get here? How did we get here? Like, I mean, not the what's happened since season one. I mm -hmm. mean, like, how do we get here? Like, right here this time. So. What happened? If y'all have been listening for a while, our first season of this podcast came out in April of 2022. Mm -hmm. And we were just honestly having faith that it would work out, even the way that we put it out, it was like God did not want us to do like a whole marketing plan. I don't know if I ever shared this, but literally we were shooting the last episode and I was kind of already thinking of how are we going to roll this out? Like, how are we going to do the launch and all this kind of stuff? And God told me all at one time, just put it all out. And so I, in my head, was like, okay, that's got to be God because that ain't me. Like, yeah. I'm going to do some strategy and, like, put it together. But he was like, put it all out. So we did, and that was great. And it people started getting interested in the conversations that we were having, right? Yet life was still happening. So yeah. we ended up having another baby, right? in October, this past October. Yep. And so since I was pregnant and we had the other two babies at home as well, it was easier for us to just do like this mid-season uncut kind of series where we would put the kids down to sleep and literally record. Oh, and whatever we whatever we could get in in that time frame is what we got for an episode. And so it was very like off the cuff. Man. And something came up though, real quick. We were just talking to a friend coming here, and this friend had never heard of our podcast prior to today. And he's listening and he's like giving us <laughs> like updates in real time as he's listening. He talked about how he could relate to those pockets of time that you get with your spouse that are clearly from God. And it could be anything from like, we're going to devotion. We're going to go to Target as he shared a story about him and his wife going to Target and what that meant for them. And thinking about as you were walking through that, even thinking about that time, 
in a time where we are, you know, now getting used to having three kids in the home and all of that to during that time, now that I think of it, like that was our time. Yeah. Like that was the time that we were like actually talking and it just so happened that we hit the record button. Yeah. (laughs) But, and even some of those conversations were at night. Mm-hmm. I've put them to bed. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, like now thinking about that, even though we weren't counting it as that then, mm-hmm. I can see that that was definitely um, God giving us some time spent yeah, in intimate conversation. Because yeah. I was coming to those conversations with a lot of the stuff that be going on in here uh-huh. that I can't always just say or that's been... You know, just cooking for a while, marinating for a while, yeah. and then I would come and I would, you know, share and we we elaborate and and we'd have some moments where it was like things would come to a head as we're talking them out in that time in yeah. that podcast recording yeah. session while the babies are asleep. Yeah, and I think that intimacy of communication has been such a solid part of our relationship and it's been the thing that has allowed us to grow not just as individuals but in our marriage and honestly I think we overestimate the power of us having those like very in-depth conversations on a regular basis well you well what hold on do you mean underestimate or yeah underestimate yeah because I'm like I actually don't underestimate them at all because so okay i was researching recently therapy didn't come around to the 1800s like that the Mm -hmm. word the you know practice the guy all that 1800s so we know that people have been getting married and all those things well this country is older than therapy and we can't say that about a lot of stuff in this country. Like we went to Europe, we're like, oh, these buildings have Mm -hmm. been here forever. And it was really cool to see buildings that were older than this country. But I say that to say, so that meant that prior to having a, um, a word, a term for this thing, marriage was created in Eden. So God had already given us Mm -hmm. what we needed to actually talk these things out, to actually have hard conversations, to have a safe space to talk within marriage. Yeah. So we've learned that in our marriage that like one of the most powerful things that we can do Mm -hmm. is talk about everything. Yeah. So like, yeah, to your point, it's like I don't underestimate it because it's like, yeah, Marriage is, God created marriage to be so many things. And within that is therapy, is being able to literally talk to my wife about anything. And one of the things, at least from a man's POV, that has to happen first is we've been coached and shown how not to talk for so long. Mm -hmm. And we have all these secrets, which which are like, you know, barriers to get us to that open communication. And we have to get those secrets out of the way so that we can have that clear line of communication. And oftentimes we don't do that work. And even sometimes we hide in that work. (laughs) I can't can't believe I'm about to say this, but we can hide in that work in therapy. I've met men that, have talked to their therapists about things that they haven't even talked to their wives about. All of this is very true. The reality is, though, we needed help to get here. Yes, for sure. We had premarital counselors who walked with us even in our first year of marriage. For sure. Who helped us learn how to communicate. And I hope that even in this podcast, as it is not in any way, shape, or form, a substitute for therapy or counseling. It can be a space where you see what it looks like when the training wheels of therapy are there for a little while, but then you take them off and you ride the bike by yourself. So it's a matter of being honest with yourself with the sense of, yeah, 
I want to be able to ride the bike by myself. I want to be able to communicate with my husband by myself without needing to call somebody to mediate between the two of us. Because if it if it's just us by ourselves, we not talking. We just yelling at each other. We're talking at each other and we're fighting each other Mm -hmm. versus learning how to navigate those hard conversations and the easy ones, too. But really the hard conversations without there being this level of of tension and division present. And I think that so many of us just need to learn that part because that's an individual journey as well as a duo journey. And you don't understand what it's going to take to communicate in a marriage until you get to the marriage part. Yeah. Because it changes when you are boyfriend and girlfriend, then married. Yeah. And I think, you know, that was great, too, with our um, premarital counseling. And even as we got into our marriage and we would call them, from them, there was always this expectation that eventually you won't need us. Yeah. Like, we're not here to be with you for the long haul. That's not what we're here to do. Right. Like. We're here to help you guys to get to a place Mm -hmm. where those barriers are moved out of the way so that there can be direct communication. Yeah. And it's crazy because that's one of those things that, like, we didn't know. Like, I know for me, a lot of people I know, therapy is just like, once you get one, you got one. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. I didn't know that, like, oh, they're not going to be with us <laughs> for the whole, it, it was even, it, even I, I remember times where like I wanted to call them and they weren't available at that time. And I'm like, yo, are you supposed to be, <laughs> you supposed to be on call? But that wasn't the case. And, and um, it's great that even though we couldn't see that then, we had people around us that could see that for us. Yeah. So now that we have gotten to that place, it's like, whoa. Yeah. It's, it's powerful. Yeah. So to get back to the original yeah, know, kind of line, know, you took us on the tangent, babe. I know. It wasn't a tangent. <laughs> it, it was, was a, a tangent. It, it was when I you was said trying to that give the update it, it as up. to I know, so it was like a that, tangent. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. We can it have tangents. A, that's it fine. Was a good tangent, yeah. It was a good tangent. So we end up having MJ, our youngest, in October twenty twenty two. And we just took a break from sharing because we had to adjust to another little baby in our household, which even though I would say, and you let me know if you agree with this, but I would say that going from two to three was easier in the sense of like our routine and like setting up the house and getting all the things together. Like we already had so much stuff that we didn't need to prepare a lot for MJ to arrive. But it definitely took us a minute to adjust to having that third baby in the house when now we are officially outnumbered. It's no longer, okay, you get Micah, I'll get Sarai, and we're good. It's like, no, somebody's got to juggle too. And yeah. not only was it turned that happened, but also when my, when MJ came, Sarai and Micah, also kind of fell off their schedule a bit because they actually needed time to adjust as well, which when Micah came, Sarai was, I think, easy. She didn't really, and she was younger too, but it wasn't as much of an adjustment, but it legitimately took our family as a unit a few months to just kind of get our bearings together and just embrace this new person and what that meant for us, how we maneuvered everywhere because it was like wow okay one extra car seat and See, enough stuff in was, the diaper bag for another baby and it was a little different for me though okay just because so i don't think i've ever shared this i think i shared this with you but when you told me that you were pregnant with mj which Thinking about timing, like, this would have been, like, right after we finished filming? Yeah. Or, yeah, because I found out about MJ in, like, I think February 2022. 
Yeah. So or like, March 2022. So we we were like just finished filming. Yeah, yeah. When this happened. The first season. Yeah. It was a surprise, but at the same time, the headspace that I was in was like, well, God, if this is what you have given us because it came from you, mm -hmm. then we have everything that we need to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that helped me to get over this scare of like, are we prepared? You know, do we have enough? Will we mm -hmm. have enough? We got other kids. Just all these, you mm -hmm. know, different thoughts were quieted when I said that to myself. Mm -hmm. So that would literally get into everything else. So like even as it pertained to the other kids and like, you know, sleeping and the bags and all of these things, it was always through the lens of, well, God, you, you brought us here, so you got us. Yeah. And it was very like literal for me. So like I didn't feel the like overwhelmingness of that per se. Mm. I think it's more overwhelming now because like he's bigger, the other kids have grown. So like, you know, early on, he is doing as much as we do as far as like he's on us or with us or being held or what have you. But like we didn't have to worry about him as much as far as being active. But now that they're all active and like very active, and if he's almost one, then that means the other ones are even older. Now it's like, oof. So yeah. Then I don't necessarily feel that way though. Like I don't know. It's, that's I don't interesting. Know. That's I'm my not. Yeah. No. I said, that's no. How I, I know. Feel it's about funny it, though but. because I feel like we're, we flip flop because I didn't necessarily have a worry about their Sarai and Micah's adjustment to MJ. It more so caught me off guard how much, it, how long it took us to kind of get into a rhythm after the fact. Like, I just assumed, oh, we'll be good. Like, we'll just, you know, kind of get into a routine. And, oh, yeah. I wasn't but, trying to get into a rhythm. I, that was my mindset. Yeah. Like. No, I, I was. <laughs> I was. Like, I'm trying to find the rhythm of our household and just, like, all of that. And, yeah, so that's, you know, how I was feeling through that. But, yeah, so we had been praying about, you know— asking God, when are we supposed to pick this back up and what is it supposed to look like? We had plans as far as how we were going to do this. And honestly, it felt like he just wanted us to live out this season first. Well, yeah, because there were a couple of times when you were bringing up like the podcast and it was, it was very, it, be, it started to become obvious because I know like, when you bring up, you know, things, you're doing it with a good heart and, and all of that. So, like, when you would bring it up, it was like, okay, she's ready to shoot. But it it just feels like we need something. I don't know what that something is. And then it, it was revealed that we needed the time to actually, like, be. Which is actually how, wasn't that how Uncut even came to be? Mm -hmm. Because we were like, you know, we it's not time to shoot the season because we're living it but yeah. like in the meantime on the journey of living it we can like have conversations yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so how do you feel about this season well hold on rewind but well, not rewind yeah rewind so you still didn't talk about the obvious part like how we how are we sitting right here what do you mean how one what I last week it? <laughs> was it last week <laughs> you go babe <laughs> We're supposed to shoot this podcast. Like one morning, I just walked in the room from, I think I was just finished taking the kids to school. And you're like, God wants us to shoot this podcast. And I'm like, okay, when? And you're like, like, we're ready, like now. And I'm like, okay. Then you're like, did you look at the place I sent you? And I'm like, no, like, and the place you, you had sent it like the night before. Yeah. So it was just like when you felt led to go, you were like, let's go. But you know, that's me though. Like I don't ever yeah. like well, but but tiptoe. Season like one you... wasn't like this. Season one was like that was more time. Like we got but to that go was and also, then we planned but that more. Was also, then, but you know? that was also a different time. For sure. Different circumstances. Sure. And sure. at the end of the day, like I think you were more shocked and startled than it, me, I was. Because well, yeah, I've been because waiting had, on God to like, okay, show me what's supposed to be the, the process. Because I knew 
I knew that it wasn't going to look like how we've done it in the past. Yes. And so when I started seeing things, I saw this space and felt it in my spirit, like, okay, no, we're ready. Like it's time. That's when I was like, all right, let's go. Like, let's pull the trigger. Like, let's get it done. Because I think that we always kept in the front of our minds what God told us to do. And he told us that we were going to do things together that were going to be beyond our ideas of like things that we would do as individuals. And this podcast is just the evidence of our obedience. So anytime I feel like God is bringing to us the methods of stewarding over the assignment he's given us, talk to the talk, girl. then it's time to go. Like, there. why are we waiting? So let's just go. So yeah, I sent it to you. I said, let's go next week. Like, what we got to wait on? I have so many thoughts right now. Okay. Okay. First thought, you look so good. Thank you. Second thought, I think about even before, man, it's wild. Okay. So we talked about season two and you had these ideas about visually. I actually think one of them was a dream about how that visually looked or or vision. And it was us face to face mm-hmm. having a conversation. Yeah. Well, before this was yeah. ever a thing. And so even as I'm sitting here looking at you, I'm making these faces and I'm shaking my head because I'm just like, all of these things are actually coming back mm-hmm. to where it's like, we didn't plan them, but the way God works is just like all these things have just happened to where yeah. without us even, you know, paying attention, you would think that we wrote down exactly what that vision was. and was like, okay, if it ain't this, then we're not going to do it. Yeah. But, but, but no, like you saw the space and I don't know if you were thinking about, oh, face to face or if you was looking at the price. I, I don't know what no. it, it all was, was it, uh, but. Well, I mean, on a very like, you know, basic level. It met all the requirements that I had for level of excellence that I know that we were supposed to do this with. I knew that we were not supposed to continue doing it by ourselves. Doing it by ourselves in that time during the Uncut series was us being able to do what we could with what we had at that time, with the time that we had, really, to be able to do that. And so I think that sometimes we think that we need all the lights and the cameras and everything to, like, fulfill what God has told us to do. But some seasons it doesn't, you don't have it. So what do you do? You just not going to be obedient because you don't have all of the things. No, you still do it to your best ability and let that be enough. And so I think that even with the uncut, it was like, I didn't like the quality of that. I didn't, I didn't like that at all, but my desire to please God overshadowed that. And knowing that, this was seeds that we were planting. And that's something, I don't know if that's like my family history of being farmers or what, but I have no problem planting seeds and just knowing that a harvest is going to come. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be later, you know, soon, but I know it's going to happen at some point. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep planting these seeds. I'm going to keep producing th- this content We're going to keep doing this until it becomes something. And that's what we're still doing today. Yeah. You know? And so I think that at the end of the day, we may question when we're on our path, oh, what am I supposed to do now, God? It's like, do the last thing he told you to do. Yeah. The last thing he told you to do, go do that and find ways to continue doing that very thing. And it may not look the same every season, but as long as you're doing what he told you to do, you know that you're on the right path and he's going to provide. If you're following what he's told you to do, he's going to have provision for that every time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the God Boat Life podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us a DM or leave us a review wherever you're listening. We really appreciate having you with us on this journey.